My name is George Bamford, Bamford Watch Department. I want to show you some of my cars and watches and you can then have an insight into my ideas of, of why I love vintage cars, vintage watches and why it's inspired what we do today. I want to show you firstly my 275 uh, GTB. This has been a labour of love of a car. So when I brought it, it wasn't in the most perfect condition. Still isn't in the most perfect of conditions, but I absolutely love it. The interior is a little bit damaged. It's, uh, it's well worn. I drive it a lot on weekends and also up, to, up and down to London. But the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is this is the same with watches. For me, when I talk about vintage watches, I've got, I've got some beautiful old double-signed Ferrari watches. It was an amazing digital Hoyer. It's got its own, its own damage, its own love, its own attention that's been put into it. And the same with my cars. You know, I love that the seat hasn't been mucked around with. You know, I've, yes, I've redone the exterior, but I haven't changed the interior because I love when I sit in there and you've got a wonderful watch and, and it's got a beaten leather strap. And for me, that is like sitting inside this car. You know, I, I love how the car is. I just love that feel. This, for me, was one of my first vintage cars that I really got. I just love, I love how it is. The blue is wrong, just to warn you. It should be a darker blue. It's almost a bit of a Mercedes blue. There's no wing mirrors, there's no nothing about it. This, for me, reminds me of like the time when cars were cool and people were cool. I also love how the tone on blues on blues, I'm obsessed with blacks and blues together, especially when I'm designing watches. And for me, there is inspiration from this. There is that blue. There is the, the powder, powdery blue inside. I love the Daytona seats. Um, I also, you know, I'm not, I don't keep it mint, mint, mint condition because I want to jump into it and drive it. I want to, I want to have fun and I want people to go, oh my God, this is a great class to be on. Taking you to more modern, and there's a reason why I've put this here for you guys, because this is a car that when I was dating my wife now, this was the car I had. And my wife, in the best way possible, my wife thought I was an idiot when I had it. She thought that I was a show-off, I probably was, but she went to me, she said, I, I like you, but the car is a little bit too much. And I kind of thought that was the coolest thing because I, then I realized that I found my, the right person in my life. As you can see, this was black on black on black. I'd done the wheels, I'd done everything black on black, and it had red interior. And I sold it, um, and actually I swapped it for another car and it took me about six, seven years to find it and get it back. And so I'm really pleased. I, I got it back and I haven't done many miles in it because I think still my wife thinks I'm an idiot having it. But I love it because it's just part of my history with my wife. <laughs> To try and get my wife into cars, this, was, this is her car. I love this gold and black colour. I just think there's something amazing. There's something great about gold and black. There's something that you look at and you go, oh my god, I love this. I love, I love how that sheen is. This is my wife's car. Hers is gold and black. Mine, so this is the 3 litre RS Porsche. I, absolutely love this car. This is a car that was owned by my father, so every time I get into it, I think of how he used to drive it to work. I love how this combination works, the gold with the black. We've done quite a few combinations. I've just done a, actually a Monaco that has a black dial with gold accents. It is inspired by this car. When you're looking at it, it is just, you know, it's a stripped out racer. And that's what I love about it is, when you're looking at it, it's got that history for me. And that's what I love about this car. I've got to take you on to British. Come follow me and we'll go on and have a look at British cars. British engineering is very, very good. 
you look at what we've got, what, what we do. When I got the chance to do something with Jaguar, or let's say maybe purchase from Jaguar, I asked them to do something special for me. That was a Jaguar Project 7, the F-Type, the naughty F-Type, and I used our Bamford Aqua Blue. And why I talk about it being one of my signature colors. Firstly, yes, it's on the watch. But secondly, for me, it is a really great combination of colors. When you're going from black to aqua blue, it's almost a whitey, bl whitey blue as well. That's what I love about it. It pops off. The blue really comes alive. And I'm, I really am. I realize I'm wearing blue today, so you can see I'm obsessed with blue. This stripe was something that I designed, I thought was a really great thing. We did the aqua blue nose, and it was just these little hints, even in the interior stitch, as every car, and you'll see some of my weird and wonderful cars today, they make me smile, it's the same with watches. And I think that's it. If they go up in value, if they don't go up in value, I don't, I know it sounds strange, I don't mind about that. I want to have it because I love it. You guys said you wanted to see another passion of mine. It is off-roaders. So I went to some friends at Devon 4x4. We went through probably about a year, year and a half of process of kind of understanding how to make an off-roader, but a naughty off-roader that would come out and be like, it can tackle anything. It's not the fastest, it's a regular defender, but if we've got a technical course, and that's what we've got here, this for me was the ultimate for that. I'm a member of a club and we have an off-road um, day. This one pulled out four or five defenders. Now, saying that, the best off-roader through it was a Series 1 Land Rover because of the weight of it and because of how skinny the tyres, it flew through every course. Uh, it was also probably the skill of the driver. I didn't drive it, someone else on the thing, so I wish, I wish it was kind of me saying, hey, I drove that. On this, winches front and back, this was a um, long wheelbase uh, 110 and we've now made it into almost looking like a 90. We've put a l massive wheel arches on it and a uh, great uh, um, suspension to make sure that we can actually go through anything. Uh, it's wading, it's also got a metal plates underneath. Interior, exterior are all built for off-roading. Even the paint, this is a um, non-scratch uh, paint. This was the last time I took it out and you can see that wonderful little dent in there. Now for me, that's like a dent on a watch. I love that I did that, that makes me smile. Now, I, sh I should come along and go, oh, you know, I can put it, I can pop it out and I can do all these things. No, I love that where it is. And I love everything about it. It's just one of those kind of crazy cool cars that is bonkers, why have I got this? And it, it is that thing of like, well, why not? The watch that probably gave me the lightning bolt, the kind of the thing that went bing, I want to know about the watch, was the Breitling Navitimer. Chronograph movement. I was given it in 1996. I always say 1996 or 1995. The reason why this watch really set me alight was because I was learning how to strip it. Now, I'm going to take you back to me as a kid. Now, me as a kid was, very much, I used to take the TV to bits, I used to take the juicer to bits, I used to take anything to bits at home and try and rebuild it. So I was the pain in the ass kid. I literally was one of those kids that probably would have had to have been locked into his house, into his bedroom. So that's how my brain was. This was probably the best present my parents have ever given me in my life. Hours of hours of hours of hours of me learning how this watch worked. There's chips and dents all the way around, all the case. That was, I had a pen knife and I used to go pop. I know every bit of this watch. I know how the movement's made. I know, I know how the springs are. I know how the jewels are. I know how everything in this watch, how to take it about, how to put it back together. 
This for me is one of those watches that when I look at it, I know how it does. This is, this is kind of my baby. Now the MGB engine, you'll see me strip, is exactly the same. It is that idea of just actually taking some time and, and, and finding that kind of idea of engineering. Throughout my business, I've always asked, how does it work or how can I do that? And that, I think, has embodied this. Welcome to The Hive. Today, for me, it's, it's about going in depth into each of the watches. I always think when you look at the past, you can kind of create the future. The Hoya calculator is one of my favorite watches because I got it in a flea market in New York. There's a dent on the uh, bezel that I did when I was in a nightclub, so I shouldn't really admit that. I know this watch inside and out. I, it's something I've really loved. I've changed the strap four or five times on it, but I love the blue of the dial. I love the orange accents. When I thought about how do I create something different, when we looked at something like even the Ortavia, I was like, well, I've got to do that sub-dial with that orange accent. But I've, I've done a twist. I've done, a, I've done almost like a, a burnt orange accent uh, with red accents, just to kind of do something different. But still looking at the past to create the future. There was nods from this watch to this watch. And that's what I wanted to do is, you know, when I, when I look at some of these designs, we love going through and deep diving into why did they do this? What was the illuminous of this? What was, what was the colorways? What was this? What was that? And that's what we've done with even this calculator. When I brought the calculator in, my team just looked at it, we analyzed it, we loved it. And then I was like, how do we, how do we translate that? How do we simplify it, but also add something else into it? And that's what we did with the Ortavia. I love the subdial on the Marigraph. I love that cross white with blue uh, accent. It's quite Bamford Aqua Blue, so I'm, I thought I couldn't do exactly a copy of it. So I did a wonderful navy blue with a nod to that Marigraph subdial. Although I just wanted to kind of give you the idea of going from old to new and why we've kind of pulled this little string from history into a new watch. I also wanted to show you some of the things where I really loved about how the digital revolution kind of infected the watch world in a way that just made you just smile and made you go, how you know, there's some really seriously cool watches. And when I went on my voyage of discovery, um, and I say a voyage of discovery, but you go into this rabbit warren of kind of going, oh my God, I love this, I love this, I love this. And you go into the nuances. I found this and I was just like, that's so freaking cool. This is just one of those things where you just wear it and everyone goes, oh, I haven't seen one of those. Wow, that's kind of nuts. Oh my God, they, they did this, they did that. and. I just loved that this is a quartz bright link. And then you throw in things like so Omega Speedmaster quartz. You kind of go, that's so cool. And then, and the, it's kind of amazing when you put all the dials together, they've all got the same, but this is a Kentucky. And even how the bracelet looks on this Kentucky. I first wore this watch at an event and I was, had it on my wrist. The person that's a, an amazing journalist slightly took the piss out of me on it and said, why would you wear something like that? I realized why I brought it and why I wore it was because it made me smile. It's not about, hey, I want to go and say, I want to shoot my cuff and go, oh my God, look at my watch. This is about understanding what, what this watch represents. Represents, you know, the case. I mean, like, to build a case like this nowadays and to say, yeah, we're gonna go and do the Kentucky. We're gonna go and do the Manhattan. We're gonna go and do a Ferrari Hoyer. You're kind of going, are you mad? But it works. I 
I've got a Hoya regatta. I'm very lucky to get this Hoya regatta. It's in very, very good condition. I love this dial. I love when I press on that and how it pops. I love, love, the, love how it is. When I got this, it then inspired one of the Bamford Ortavias. It was an all black Ortavia. And I just love the idea of these pops of color. Now I've done the mustard uh, orange because for me I love that burnt orange vibe because there's something quite cool about that. One of the team calls it vintage orange because there's a difference in orange and I wanted to kind of get that vintagey vibe with a modern twist. So when I look at these two together, I, I feel like they're separated by time but they're not separated by design. And that's what I kind of loved is that the whole thing of, of this, these two being akin, being, being brothers. I want to also talk to you about Zenith. The El Primero, one of the best movements in the world, I believe. The history of Zenith is so freaking cool. You look at that brand and you go, everything about it is just amazing. We first, as Banff Watch Department, the first watches we were working on were Zenith. This was my first ever watch that I did as a Zenith official relationship. This holds a really close thing in my heart. I put this on, it makes me smile, as I, as I say about all the other watches. It's not one of those things where I'm saying to you, this is every single day of my life I'll put this watch on. Because I have got this bad boy, so it's kind of like, how do I have the two? But this for me, I just love the technical honeycomb dial. I love the um, ceramic bezel that we've put in, uh, so it's, it's a relief ceramic bezel. This is a proper relationship this watch embodies. My collecting goes way back, and this for me was like, whenever I go, let's say, to the countryside, this is my grab and go watch. I love it, I love the aging on the dial, I love how it is, and the sub dials, and I just think that the combination of the red um, strap, you know, it's not the most amazing strap, but it works with the watch. And I just love even how they pressed into the back. I love the feel of it on my wrist. I love the size of it and just understanding. And I think that's so cool.